And joining us now, a prominent litigator, former federal prosecutor, independent counsel for the Whitewater investigation, Robert Ray. Great to have you with us. Thanks, Lou. Uh, Great to be with you. Let's start with uh, the three left-wing professors making no pretense of being anything other than committed uh, partisans of the highest order. Or the lowest, depending on how you want to right. look at it. Right. Look, uh, Jonathan Turley was the star. It just goes to show you that one person who knows what he's talking about beats three people who are biased uh, any day. Well, so sir. I, you know, somewhat disagree with the president. And uh, the, the Democrats didn't even make a, uh, a, a pretext to a fairness to actually, you know, have a, a proceeding that looked like there was equal time given to both sides. Okay. Uh, and so he's right about that. But, the, you know, it's a funny thing about doing these hearings, you know, the truth and fairness and what's right has a funny way of coming out, and it certainly did today. Despite no effort whatsoever, in fact, every effort uh, to resist fairness, uh, to uh, provide the president due process, nothing approaching that. But you, you make a, an interesting point. Because of their horrible conduct, uh, in, in my opinion, uh, particularly uh, Professor uh, Harlan from uh, Stanford, uh, bringing in uh, the first couple's son uh, into that hearing. Uh, that was I, a cheap shot, and I think it was uh, a, a below the bar of, of decency. Look, you know, politics is hardball, but we don't involve the president's family and particularly a minor child. That's out of bounds. And the first lady, I... I I compliment for not waiting for she Air Force One to land. She decency and grace as she yeah. always does. I, I, I want to turn, though, to an interesting strategic element that occurred today. Uh, as much as everyone was focused on the president, uh, ostensibly, uh, in this, it became about those three law professors. It became about their, I think, unwise uh, approach to their testimony. And that's never a good day. When yeah. the witnesses themselves become the focus of the inquiry... That means, I mean, I have tried a lot of cases. Right. When, when that happens, that's not good. So this was not a good day for the Democrats and their engineered impeachment effort. So today, uh, even the concept to begin with, before the actuality, uh, didn't make a lot of sense. Uh, suddenly, the Judiciary Committee is taking seriously the Constitution, really. Uh, and then, well, and Jonathan Turley, I mean, I think pointed if we if we can deal with substance for a sure. moment. I mean, look, he was right on target to say the Democrats boundless interpretation or standardless interpretation mm -hmm. of abuse of power and indeed bribery essentially doesn't leave you with any basis to determine what conduct falls over the line mm -hmm. with regard to impeachable conduct and what conduct falls short of that line. And I think he made a you know great pains to really tell the Congress you ought to think seriously about what you're doing. If you don't have evidence that in connection with the call, which is really the principal basis of this impeachment, that the president made a demand or coerced or pressured the president of Ukraine, mm -hmm. you don't have a bribery case. And to try to suggest otherwise, which is what went on today yeah. from these law professors but and the, the Democratic in, you know, in, in inquisitors, is frankly a, doing a great disservice to the country. Yeah. We're going to the substance of, of the day, uh, the outset of this broadcast. We pointed out that previous presidents have in point of fact defied subpoenas without being uh, in, even a suggestion. And that's the uh, most that ridiculous they would be notion. And, and, right, and look, this, you, cannot, you cannot have a system in which one branch is struggling with another branch over a, an assertion mm -hmm. of privilege. And as uh, Professor Turley quite aptly pointed out, the referee in connection with the dispute between those two branches is a court. If the Democrats are not prepared to play this out and get a final resolution in the courts over who's right with regard to an assertion of privilege, they should be not left to complain now and then make that the basis of another impeachment article. I don't know how under any circumstance that could ever be considered to be fair and in the country's best interest. And unlikely to be politically uh, sustainable. Right. And isn't, Lou, the whole point of this is... Aren't you trying to persuade? I mean, the only way an impeachment is successful is if the Democrats do something that persuades the other party that they're right. Was there any effort really to do that today? And if there was, it wasn't successful, which means that we're going to have a partisan, illegitimate impeachment effort to remove this president from office, which is dead on arrival in the Senate. Right. 
Uh, which it has been illegitimate from the outset uh, because there was never a floor vote, uh, unlike previous uh, attempts at impeachment. Uh, this has been uh, this has been wrongheaded from the from the outset. And There's it's nothing approaching. Fair. And it's startling to see. And look, I hope the American people are watching because if they watch today, I would be embarrassed yeah. by what I saw. Well, I think probably most Americans are just furious at the conduct of uh, so-called educated legal scholars. Uh, three of them. And if you press this, you're going to play, pay a price ultimately with the American people. That's my firm view. Well, I, and I, I wish I could argue with you, but I can't. Robert Ray, thanks so much. Great to be with you, Lou. Thanks Good again. Good to see you.